Good afternoon, folks. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a little bit more personal things involving myself. Um, and that would be about a life well lived and what that looks like for me. Um, hopefully, no one watching this uses this against me for some reason. You know, there are people out there like that, and hopefully none of them are entertaining my stuff. So, um, aside from the obvious stuff, like, uh, you know, have enough money to take care of things and all that, um, something I'd like to be is, um, self-sustainable, which means that I don't need to be, um, with anyone in order to keep my life flowing. Um, that hasn't been a thing in my life, thankfully. Like, the only time that it becomes a thing is when it has been made a thing, and those were mistakes I made a lot when I was younger. I don't make those types of mistakes anymore. Um, so I'm, I feel like a large part of that is well taken care of already, but uh, in the future, I still want it to be that way even when I do get married or you know, when I'm in any type of partnership or any of these other situations, um, I want to always be self-sustainable and make the conscious choice to collaborate with another. Um, something I think that some people don't even know what it is, is permaculture would definitely be something that would be, um, you know, a life well lived, it would be like a one of the pentultimate examples of what a life well lived is to me, especially in today's environment. Um, it's like the perfect collaboration between nature and technology. And something about that symbiosis just really just does it for me. Um, not only that, but it just doesn't make sense to make use of the best of everything that's available to you. Um, when you cut out one side or another side of anything, that just, to me, kind of seems like you're trying too hard to do something. Um, to be honest, it's kind of obvious that, you know, you are here on Earth at this point in time for whatever reason it is. So it doesn't make sense for you to try to like make your life 100% anything because I know you've heard the term balance is key and you're not balancing when you make something 100% of anything you know um so the next thing that's really important for me um in terms of my life well lived is low stress low stress is almost Ne like completely necessary for me to live in a balanced moment even like in a balanced day in a balanced moment and something about my profile um physically makes it so that it's actually dangerous for me uh, if i have high stress environments that i'm inside of so i do everything within my power to completely remove myself from any environment that becomes um, toxic or high stress. And the good news is I have that within my power because I'm not dependent on anyone. You know, And a lot of times if it's a high stress environment and you're dependent on someone, it becomes a toxic environment, um, potentially leading to some sort of abuse, so on and so forth. Not that it's always like that. Sometimes people do find a good mixture with each other. You know, that works well for them. But uh, nowadays, I don't see that happening actually too much. So low stress is necessary because you have different parts of your day, hopefully, that you incorporate in your day, which involves, some of it involves thinking and some of it involves doing. You know, again, if you're 100% of either one of those two things, you're out of balance. Uh, and the things that include thinking are a little bit more fragile than are the things that involve doing. So if you are in a more fragile state and you are constantly being barraged by situations that are other than your own thoughts or, you know, higher than your thoughts, but I'm not getting into that right now, not at this second anyway, then you are probably not taking care of yourself. 
So another thing you know, that is beautiful in this scenario of you know a life well lived, like real love, you know. And of course, you can get into the already pre-mentioned definitions of love, anything from agape, eros, etc., etc. Um, the thing that I'm speaking about most closely is agape because I'm speaking on love and not necessarily sex or romance. Um, I don't know. Uh, personally, I don't find it hard to understand love, like actual love versus like uh, romance or uh, transactional types of situations. Um, like two things that I see a lot of people doing that I don't like is they're in transactional relationships, which is all well and good, but don't call that love when it's not. And the other is um, they pretend because they think that they're salvaging something, which again ends up being a toxic situation because it either breeds uh, discord in the relationship or it just becomes a situation where the other person believes that you know this activity that they have been doing is fruitful or acceptable within your relationship and it's really not. Um, again, not love um, at that point. I mean, it could be you know, a faulty way of trying to facilitate love, but in my definition, in my understanding, love is based off of accepting and um, working with, collaborating with, you know, eventually, especially if it's a romantic relationship, collaborating with, you know, another person's being, and they can't be, you can't be your being if you're lying, and they can't be their being if they're doing too much, you know, so, like that, so all these different holes down here are missing now, or not being filled, so to speak. And that kind of leads into the next thing, which would be good sex, right? For a life well lived. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, some people use sex for control. Some people use sex for, um, you know, some filling out some part of themselves, which they think that because sex feels good or the aftermath of sex feels good that they're being fulfilled in a part where they're not is the same difference as someone who takes drugs to fill holes of different parts of their psychology and their understanding. Um, to me, good sex requires um, just an understanding of what it's happening for. That's just the general... I'll leave it there. Um, if you want more information about what I think about and, and on sexual things, I have a series called Real Sutra, and I will include some in the link below so that you can click it and see what else I think about this. But I'm talking about a life well lived right now, which sex is a part of life, but it's not, I mean, and it's some partially and usually the thing that inspires life. Um, you know, whether, you're, it, again, it depends on what you're talking about in terms of life, because life is a very big topic. Um, it's not just one thing. We're talking about creation of life. Um, so the next thing um, is spiritual compatibility. The types of things that I understand and study are very in-depth and are generally considered orthodox in the part of the world that I live in. Um, hopefully this understanding changes once I'm in a different environment. Um, whether that be, you know, the Western world changing a little more or um, me traveling and doing more in other countries, which I haven't had the pleasure of doing minus when I was a child. So, um, yeah, spiritual compatibility is really important to me because uh, the type of spirituality that I have is very encompassing, meaning that it takes over every aspect of a living day. Meaning, um, now some people will go to pray on a certain day of the week, but for me, it's not like that. It's literally like every minute is an understanding that God, like God, 
like the big circle, God, is in everything. Like it is like the the makeup of everything. So if I am interacting with the makeup of everything all the time, not only does that provide opportunities for things to be understood, but it also like that most people don't see and comprehend, but also it's just um, different because um, it allows for you as an understander to operate differently in the world than other people would normally operate. And so that requires me to be with other people that are either of a similar mindset, uh, a similar direction, or um, doing maybe the same thing as me. I've met a few people that are very similar to me, which is beautiful. It's been um, much, of, much to my relief um, just because, you know, um, from my uh, environment again because I'm not uh, my spirituality is different than like how others in my usual environment not everyone but a lot of people don't operate the same way so I've been looked down upon a lot or told that you know I'm you know not all blah 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 when it really is quite the opposite um, but I'm not the type of person that looks down on others. So I allow people to believe what they want to believe. And I go on with whatever I'm doing, which ends up serving me, which is great. So that's pretty much like the vibe that would be my life well lived. You know, one of my big questions right now is who would I want to be in the room when I'm passing away? You know, that's a very significant thought and it's crazy because I'm not going to answer that on this on this video. That's number one. But uh, it's one of those things, you know, like a life well lived, uh, even though, you know, I am what I would consider a spiritual person. Um, I'm trying my best uh, to live in the moment a lot more now. Um, which I didn't when I was younger so much. I was more in the future and being affected by the past, which is not necessarily um, conducive to certain types of processes that are that create like highly successful people. So nowadays, um, I'm in a different type of thought process. I've been that way, but it's starting to have its fruit in a way where people are able to actually perceive it, which is awesome. So I'm excited to see what these next few years bring on my table.